but we do kind of have to start off with the biggest game of the week. And it is indeed Sassuolo versus Spezia. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> It's the Davide la Capitale. You <laughs> honestly threw me off and for a second. I was like, wait, what? Which game are we talking about? <laughs> wait, I was like, what? It? Yeah. <laughs> no, it is Rome's astonishingly good performance against Lazio. It was nothing short of magnificent in every way, in preparation, <laughs> in execution, in mentality, in... I just don't even know if there's any more ins, to be honest. But if there was ever a match in which a, a team totally dominated another and put on the performance of the season, it was indeed Jose Mourinho's Roma against Maurizio Sarri's Lazio. Credit where credit's due. This been, has been home to a lot of criticism of Jose Mourinho's Roma. And this is a wonderful match to restore a little bit of faith in this project that they're building with Jose Mourinho to make us all smile again about the possibilities. But it also doesn't take away from the fact that we have to see what happens in going forward. And, you know, and I don't think it takes away from any of the criticism that I feel has been fair of this team. But this match, Tammy Abraham, take it away, Nikki. Oh, yeah, Tammy, Tammy, Tammy. It's all about Tammy. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's also about Jose, who, um, when you were saying about the smile, I was thinking, I don't know if you saw that Instagram um, post he did of, uh, yeah. I can't remember what he phrased it now. It's like, when you know the match is going to go well and your picture before the, the game on the team bus is the same as the one after, it's just his face all close up and smiling. But um, yeah, Tammy Abraham, what a story. He scored in in the first minute 56 seconds was the official time which made it the fastest ever goal in a, a Rome derby played in Serie A it's actually I don't think this has been as widely reported but his second goal after 22 minutes meant he had the fastest two goals um to do to get a brace in a, a, a Serie A Rome brace. derby as well so really really incredible um game from him and he could have had a hat-trick should have had a hat-trick really in the second half Cristante gave him a great ball that could have made it three um he also uh, put Pellegrini through in between his two goals and could have had an assist in it. Absolutely sort of um, game-defining performance. And look, I mean, the goals he scored, the first one is just purely right place at right time. You know, that's a, a corner mm -hmm. from Lorenzo Pellegrini. It comes back off the bar and, and he's there underneath it waiting to put it in. The second one is 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 something smarter. It's a really well-timed run, I thought. Nice body control as well, because the, the cross that comes in from Karlsdorp was nice team move built up to it, but the cross that comes in from Karlsdorp is a bit behind him, um, but he adjusts to it and, and finishes quite elegantly. But I think there's two things going on. And some of this, um, the, the Chronicles to Fawzi patrons have already heard, because I did do like an immediate reaction to the game, which contains some of this. But I, I think there's, there's, there's the one element of this, which is, Tommy Abraham is a goal scorer, right? He, he was a very a productive goal scorer in the championship with Bristol City and Aston Villa. He had a good, pretty solid season uh, goal scoring at Chelsea. And until Thomas Tuchel came along and Thomas Tuchel basically said, look, I, I as admitted, he didn't have much faith in him. I think that he's doing it as well as he has anywhere in his career at, at Roma. The, the, the numbers speak for themselves, 23 goals this season. And he's now, I think, um, second only to Robert Lewandowski in, in Europe's top five leagues number of goals scored in 2022. But on top of that, I think um, this game, and especially the way Roma started this game, with such intensity, such aggression, such a high press, and so much of that led from the front by not just Abraham, but Abraham and Pellegrini. Um, I think that also really speaks to something else that's gone on with Abraham this season, which is Jose Mourinho, who we have criticised, and I will continue to criticise for the things he gets wrong, but I think he yeah. has got under Tammy Abraham's skin and he's making Tammy Abraham into an aggressive front foot forward, centre forward in the mould that Mourinho likes. And I think that's where we can also open this up and say, you know what, it's a great win for Roma. It's a great performance by Tammy Abraham and it's a great day for Jose as well, I think. I think it's important that we say like, what I thought was so interesting about this is that it's it was so different to the way that the first match went, right? And obviously, like, when we think about the 3-2 win to Lazio in the reverse fixture, it was a very confusing match because, firstly, we didn't know what 
and who Lazio were. They were a team mm-hmm. that were very vertical and different in the way that they played under Inzaghi, and they were trying to be molded into something different, obviously, for Sadi, you know, introducing Sadi ball, Sadi is more, whatever you want to call it. And so they were sort of stuck in between two identities. But I think what worked so well for them in that game was the fact that Pellegrini wasn't on the pitch and Lord almighty, do I love this man. <laughs> I mean, if there is a more delectable free kick goal, please show me because nothing, nothing is more glorious than that free kick. That was a work of art. That was pure perfection. And that man, when he, when he like really shows up, he really shows up. I mean, there is so much talent in his feet. There is so much vision and creativity on the ball. But anyway, he was absent. Like I've just made it all about him. I know, <laughs> but like, uh, but it was, was also interesting because game. I thought, yeah. yeah, he was absent in the first game. And I thought that what ha- what worked so well is that they adopted a very inzaghi like vertical type of football in that. And it kind of threw Roma for a loop because that's a little bit of what they were trying to do themselves, you know. And Lazio dominated the flanks. They were excellent going forward and they were just very fast and compact and managed to really um, pick on the weaknesses of that Roman defence. Now we switch it around and now we come into this match. And what I thought that Jose Mourinho did so well is prepare, 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 prepare on a tactical level. He studied it well. And I, I was very impressed with that. And, and maybe it's much easier to study Lazio now because they're not caught between two identities. They're not trying to find the instructions of Sadi. They pretty much adopted them. And we can see a clearer, not a, you know, a, not a well-defined Sadi team, but a clearer Lazio team that is now being coached by Maurizio Sadi. So we understand a little bit more of what it is that they're trying to do. And he stopped that dead in its tracks. It was overwhelming. It is always having runners off the ball who made intelligent runs. There was always a free man that was running vertically to provide an outlet for a pass. It destroyed Lazio. And and I think it is those off-the-ball runners used so cleverly that made the massive difference for me. Um, and I and I like that it was done so well. It was an interesting point because someone said, I wonder how the game would have been played if the goal wasn't scored so quickly. Because it, that changes mm. a lot from an emotional point of view, from a mentality point of view that gives you a lot of strength for Roma um and I don't it shouldn't really take away from Lazio but for Roma they were much more able or confident to play the game that they know how to play I wonder what would have happened if it was just a goal that came after 15 minutes rather than the first minute I'm interested to see that and a lot were saying you know there were no drops in concentration there were no um massive flaws that came from Roma and actually what was so great about them was that they kept hunting for more goals kept hunting for more goals but again it's it's much better to do when you manage three nil at half time and to be confident yeah. and to manage that when you are against a side that is now completely broken yeah there's so much into that isn't there I mean I think the the not letting up thing it was um one of the sort of many little iconic moments in this game was Jose Mourinho three nil up before half time when the quarter first started giving it the ole ole about every pass <laughs> he was like not having it like I'm gonna go over there and, and tell you guys Shut up. and the quarter first listened to it I, I'm oh so God, can we you brought this up but I'm really really sorry can we not discuss that comment like did you not laugh when you read it like because it was on the one hand he was saying you know you know, actually, I'm just going to read the comment now. Just, just a second. Do, do, do. Um, I don't like a player interpreting that Ole as a game being finished or they're putting on a show. Respect is very important. We won by three <laughs> goals. Could have had four or five, but respect for the opponent is essential. It's kind of like, you know, I stole your husband. You know, I know it's bad, but we still must be nice. Do you know what I mean? It could have been four or five. That's, that's yeah. such classic shows. And I mean, it's, do you know what? Like, I'm, I, I think one thing I really, one thing I really want to say about this this game, like I think we've had two Rome derbies this season, and they've both been iconic. Because the first one, yeah. had Maurizio Sarri at full time underneath the court of that with an eagle on his arm, and it was such an image, you know, Sarri, who's this sort of. I don't know how to describe him. I mean, everyone's seen him, so I don't need to. But like this sort of slightly sort of comes across as this avuncular, slightly sort of schlubby individual sometimes, you know, with his cigarettes, but just standing underneath the uh, the, the corner with a massive eagle. I mean, they're huge, the eagles. And then this game has 
Jose in full flow, not just during the game, but before it. I mean, there was a comment um, about, oh, well, you know, we've had to play 90 minutes and um, Lazio will be at home <laughs> smoking cigarettes with, with, with Sally. But also the one that I thought that was really striking in terms of telling you what Jose's relationship is and, and how things are, are going with him with the Roma fans. When Zeman kind of, I don't even know, don't even know if Zeman was really coming for him, but Zeman was interviewed before the game and, and said, look, I'm just being objective. Sarri's doing a better job than, than Mourinho is. And Mourinho's response to that, which is, um, manager's won 26 titles, doesn't have to listen to someone who's won Serie B twice. And that's a classic <laughs> Mourinho response, right? It's a very Mourinho response, but it's also like, one of those comments that for another manager in Rome could have exploded on him because Simon, while he's, I think a lot of people, Juventus fans probably think of him that way. A lot of non-Roma things think of him that way. A lot of Roma fans love him because he went there and yes, he didn't win what he was hoped to. He was certainly, you know, didn't get the, the end result, but he went to Roma and he spoke in their view, truth to power. He said the, un the unsayable things. He stood up to, to Juventus and, and the big forces and, for that reason, the ultras in, in, in Rome actually still hold him in very high esteem. And so Mourinho could have been treading on thin ice with that comment, but he wasn't because he's established himself now in such a way with those fans that they 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 are on his side. And I think that's remarkable when you consider that the results, as we've talked about, look, they're not going to finish in the top four probably still. The results are not overall where people hoped they would be. But I think that... Um, that buy-in from the players is so important. And you know that the comment about smoking cigarettes with Sari was kind of just a bit of fun. That wasn't even an offensive one. Sari took it in good humour, said I've stopped smoking, actually. Um, they were still but... smoking at the final whistle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They never showed up, but that was the whole point. <laughs> but but I actually think the point you made, Amelia, was so important because it's totally reasonable to assume that these Roma players, a lot of whom did play on Thursday night, should have been knackered. They should have been the ones who were tired in this game. And I, I really do wonder if you don't score immediately, whether this goes differently. And I think that probably though is another credit to Mourinho that he told his team, look, we've got to go hell for leather in these first, first 15, 20 minutes because we have to win it while we are still here. And if you don't do it then, then you sort of start slower. Maybe you never kick out of that gear and you end up playing a, a sluggish game because your legs are tired. Yeah, it, it is absolutely that. It is going hell for leather straight away. It is also understanding that if you have watched, you know, Lazio over the seasons, you know that they start off the season really well and somewhere along the lines, it, it, it doesn't work out as well. And they start to drop off under Inzaghi. Obviously with Sadi, there were problems of like the tactics and trying to absorb that. But they are a team that can be mentally weak at times. And, and it is about trying to destroy that. It is about trying to play very vertical football. It is trying to, you know, it's the way they won back possession. There was just this, this desire, this happiness. And it is a lot derived from that energy that you get of, of it's being your fans, of like having, you know, Totti in the stands, of it being like this Roman fixture where Roma were the highlight, right? Like a goal immediately and it's going to keep pushing you and pushing you, which is, which just what was remarkable as well is that we had seen two years of just, we saw this as well in the Napoli game against Udinese, but what a crowd and how much of a, like that makes a difference to have a full, you know, number of people watching you and pushing you on and the atmosphere that you hear. I mean, we just came from two years of COVID where we just really couldn't enjoy that and how much of a difference that makes when, you know, you've got this praise from this young Englishman who has really grown, scored only like Robert Lewandowski scored more goals in 2022 than this man, you know, than Tammy Abraham, who has mm. gotten a lot of criticism, you know. And I'm not, I'm not here to tell you he's the world's greatest striker, but he is somebody that's working hard on, on trying to be, you know, on, on, on listening to what it is that he's being asked to do, on listening to the tactical instructions and is a coachable guy. He listens and plays. He plays with his feet. He tries to bring everyone in. He's there to score the headers. He's there to, to try to use his physicality if he can. And, and he, and he's still like nimble and mobile enough to make it all so perfect. And, and I think that's what I like so much about his progression is about having players like that. You know, I, I, what's next? Here's the thing. Yeah. 
I mean, you, I thought that was interesting what you were saying about like how he, the players, uh, not the players, rather the fans have really bought into everything that Jose Mourinho said. And that's why he was able to say that about Zeman. Would he have responded, like, how was that going to work if he had lost to Lazio? And are Lazio just a team that have really found their team at all? That's, that's a great question. If this game goes differently, does that change everything for Jose? Maybe it's a derby. It's so big in Rome, and especially in a season when nothing else, well, not nothing else, because they are through to the quarterfinals of the Europe Conference League. If they win it, I think that will be celebrated, even though it's, you know, it's not the biggest trophy. It's not the one they're aiming for. I think it still means something um, to Roma. I think you could see that from the crowd on Thursday night, by the way. There was a real crowd there. There was, there was real attention on it. But, um, but but nevertheless, the derby is is huge always. And in a season like this where you're not quite where you want to be in the league, I think it feels even more so. And so it was a really important game to win. And I think winning it so emphatically really is one of those moments that can that can change the trajectory for the better for Roma. I think it's it's not to underestimate. You know, I, I really want to say, and I, I, I probably shouldn't let this be the, the Tammy Abraham podcast, especially after I did a thing, but I, I you know, just what you were saying though, Mina, about the, about the crowd and, and the reaction to it. You know, one of those moments again that just stayed with me a little bit was after the game, him being interviewed on the pitch and being asked to sort of explain how it feels and him saying, I, I can't, like, I, I really can't tell you what this emotion is to, to hear that. And I just thought, what a striking thing it must be. You know, you are in a country that isn't your 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 home country. You know, it did take him a little while to come around to the idea of moving to Roma this summer. He didn't do it straight away. He had to be talked into it a bit. Um, helped that Ficayo Tamori was already in Italy and talked it up to him. Helped that that Jose Mourinho was there, who he has described again just this last week. He described him as someone who is still an idol to him, who he remembers from being a Chelsea, and and he was a starstruck by. But I think the the the, the that moment when he was underneath the Cordova and they were doing the you know, the um, Auto Parlante, the PAs that are doing that, he's shouting his first name and the crowd all coming back with Abraham, you know, like they say Abraham in that Abraham way. I, I think it was really moving, actually. I don't know, like I felt like it was one of those sort of makes your hair stand up moments. And I I wonder what the future holds for him. Uh, Chelsea do have a buyback option at 80 million euros. I think they'll probably want to take it up if he keeps playing like this. I think he has been quite explicit about wanting to to win the Champions League and, and big trophies in his career. And I, I wonder if it could even end up being a one-year adventure if if they don't get into the Champions League for that reason. But I hope it isn't. I hope he, he's there for at least one more season because I think it's it's a really wonderful story that's being um, written with, with Abraham in, in Rome. But on the Lazio side, because we have talked a lot about Roma, I, mm. I don't know, Mina, I, I think this was a real, really deflating result. Um, Obviously, there's such an up and down team happen all season. I keep thinking that they're, they're getting close to turning a corner under Sarri, and, and then they don't. And you know, even in the sort of the little details, like you know, they, Roma had um, another of their sort of academy graduates, Zalewski, starting at left wing back, and and you thought that that was going to be a weak point for them. You felt like Felipe Anderson had been stationed opposite him to go at him, and they couldn't win yeah. any of those duels. They couldn't win anything. Yeah. Um, it was a really, uh, it was a really bad night for Lazio, in which there was very little to redeem at all in their performance, other than I don't know one good touch from Chiloy Mobina. I remember him having one really great touch to bring a ball down in the box that he then didn't follow up by by finishing it. That's, that's about all I can remember. Do you think that they should have had the penalty that mattered to us? It was oh, God, <laughs> not that that penalty would have done anything to. I don't know. I mean, maybe it would have made it one-one, but I mean, there's. Here's the thing. Sadi says, I don't want to play midweek because I don't have like a whole week to prepare. And this is a thin squad. Yeah. Again, these types mm. of comments make me really angry. But and then when you haven't played the whole week and you, ha- you know, and you have had a week, you know, like like Jose Mourinho has said to smoke your cigarettes, you know, with your team. Have you just stayed smoking cigarettes and not really shown the passion of like maybe a win midweek would have actually jolted you and made you a happier team? Because I'm still one of those who believes that wins bring more wins with you, you know? What do you think of that? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think that's a really, really, um, yeah, it's, it's an observation that I, I hadn't thought about. And then as, as soon as you said it, I was like, God, yes, I do remember him sort of making that point where we haven't got the squad for it, we can't do it. I... This is not how I expected this game to go at all. I was watching that Vitesse mm. game on Thursday night and I thought, 
this is not what Roma need. And, you know, at least a huge relief for them to score that goal in the 90th minute and not have to go to extra time. So if they go to extra time here, it's, it's you know, it's done. They're going to completely kill their chances for the derby. Um, and and it's it's really a bad reflection on Sadie that they couldn't get a better performance than this after having all those extra days to rest up and and prepare. I I just don't know. I I have actually got a really big soft spot for Mezio Sadi. I I want him to do well. I'm I'm one of those people who will never sort of will never like not want to cheer a little bit for the the midlifers for the ones who get into football in the Erigosaki way coming out of a not football background it becomes something because I think that's cool right like the idea that we all have the power in our lives to go on these journeys is something that's really compelling to me but I I don't know that that this season if I can really vouch for his performance as a manager in a big way because while there have been some really really impressive wins it's all been so alternate so on off on off that it just doesn't feel like it's building somewhere yeah, I mean, to his, to just to just to quickly mention this because we do probably have to move on from now. But I do sort of feel like moving from Inzaghi to Sadi was quite a big shock to the system in terms of philosoph- philosophies. Um, and I guess it is going to take some time. I still think like there were performances that Lazio have managed that have been really fantastic, but this one was this certainly wasn't there. And and I think when they were almost caught between. It was interesting because they managed some big wins when they were caught in between two identities against Inter, against Roma, obviously. And now that they are a Saudi team, they have actually managed to consolidate and keep a better defence. But they've also lost the element of surprise. And maybe now they, they have exposed their fatal flaw. And it is one that I think that Jose Mourinho has done very well at, which is these off the ball runners and, and how to work your midfield to win back possession, overwhelm. And, and it really worked. So... With Rome, it's going to be interesting to see because they've got Sampdoria and Salernitana, but then they have Inter and then Napoli. So I want to see how they perform in those matches. They're still three points off where they were at this point last season, but does not matter when this could just be the exact springboard that they need to, to go further? We don't know. So, And we also don't know who's going to stick around for next season. 